Hi guys, I am Steve Hamilton, and this is a tour collection of my nearly $30 million car collection filled with Hypers, Supers, and some really neat, fun cars. Because of my upbringing, we crafted the slogan, Driven to Give Back, for the Hamilton Collection. We share these vehicles with everybody. Anybody that wants to sit in them, great, no problem. A child, sure, come sit in my vehicle. We even let tons of people drive these vehicles. I think that Bugatti's been driven by 50 different people. One more side note, if you are an owner of a unique, exotic, rare, or cool vehicle, make sure you share it with the community. You would be surprised how much it could touch someone's life. We're actually gonna rank every single vehicle my favorite to my least favorite today. And don't skip through the video because they are out of order. And we did that on purpose because you can't put them in order. That's no fun. So I'm gonna give some very unique insight about what I like and hate most about every single car. I'm gonna call out some uh, unique nuances. I'm gonna show you some awesome upgrades that I've done to every one of them. There's just a whole lot of freaking good info. All right, enough of all that. We're gonna jump into the car that I have owned the very longest. Here it is. This is my 1967 Chevelle. It is the very, very first car I got out of this entire collection. I've had it for darn near 14 or 15 years now. It is the stinkiest car of the collection, no doubt. My Chevelle has a 496 big block motor that's got about 500 horsepower. It's paired with a Muncie four-speed transmission. I have a pro touring suspension kit. This thing is lowered to the ground. I have it wide bodied in the rear. I also have uh, four piston calipers in the rear, six piston calipers up front to give this thing some awesome braking. I really like to keep my interiors timeless so the interior looks pretty much exactly as it did when it rolled off the factory in 1967. My favorite thing about this car is the fact that it's just the most nostalgic because it was a car that I decided to buy darn near 15 years ago. My least favorite is that I've just been through three engines and I should have fuel injected it from the start. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get an LS motor and swap that out this winter and finally just be done with carbureted motors and just breaking them. I had custom Asante wheels made. These are the only wheels like this in the entire country. The rears are 20 by 12 inch, the fronts are 18 by nine inch. They fit absolutely perfect, tucked right underneath the fenders. And I did them in the matte black face with the gloss black lip. I think these wheels look amazing. I'm glad, I think I made a great decision with these ones. The Chevelle also happens to be my son and my wife's favorite car of the whole collection. The Chevelle falls right in about in the middle of the list at number 15. Now on to my Ford GT. All right, up next is my Ford Explorer. Just kidding, same key, but this is a 2006 Ford GT. This was the second to last Ford GT to run off of the production line in the 0506 model. I thought that was pretty cool, didn't find out about that until I got it. This is one of the vehicles that I threw some aftermarket wheels on and I don't think the team is super pleased about it. I think I did like a C minus. Comment below, let me know how I did on, you know, let's, let's call it a one to 10 rating. Let me know how I did on the wheels, 10 being best, one being worst. I'm gonna put it at like a six. Awesome curb presence with this vehicle. It may be the lowest vehicle that I own. What did he say? And this is one of the cars that I'm just not like naturally attracted to go drive, but when I do decide to drive it, it's one of my favorite driving experiences that I have. It's one of five stick shifts uh, that are part of the collection right now. I have a supercharger that's directly behind my head. It's literally six inches from my head as I'm driving. All right, speaking of that supercharger, check this out. I mean, first of all, look at how awesome this looks when you just pop open the back. You can see this massive supercharger powered by Ford. And there it is, merely an inch from the glass that is right near my head. Um, this, this is one of the quieter, sleek vehicles that I can actually take out at 6 a.m. in the morning without waking up the neighbors. This is also the only vehicle that I actually, other than the wheels and tires, I have zero modifications done to it. And for whatever reason, I feel like I need to be kind of a purist with this vehicle because I don't know. I just, I just don't feel like I should modify it. I feel like it would be a sin. My absolute favorite feature about the Ford GT is that it has like the smoothest, most amazing stick shift driving experience. First gear goes to like 40, 50 miles an hour. Second gear goes almost to 80 plus miles an hour. It is it is like a, a built race car. My least favorite feature as we segue into the interior is if somebody parks right next to you, the door opens like this, there's no real way to get out of it. So you have to basically do this to get in and out. <laughs> Smash my head into the ceiling as I got in. As you shut the door, a taller guy like me, I'm six feet two. I worry that this thing is gonna decapitate part of my head at any given time. That is a legit worry that I, I've got. Same, I, I always duck down like this. I know, but like you don't need to, but I do. Ford GT is equipped with carbon seats. It has these holes. I don't know if these are weight savings or if they just allow them to breathe a little bit better, but they actually make it quite uncomfortable. That's all right though. 
They kept a very, very timeless gauge cluster here. The speedometer is actually way off to the right, which I'm told is more indicative of a race car vehicle. I want to double down that very timeless interior that probably can make you feel like you're in one of the GT40s of the 60s. And then I lied about the wheels and tires. We actually added a Bluetooth Kenwood receiver in here as well because the factory radio was just bad. And this is a hacksaw that I bought for a project with the kids a year ago and it just hasn't made its way out of the vehicle yet. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Unique to this vehicle, outside of it probably having the cheapest key of the whole collection is, you put the key in, turn it, and then there's actually a push button after you turn it. Oh, clutch. Stick shift. There she goes. This is definitely a vehicle that I like and I like driving, so it ends up number 12 on the list. On to the next. At number 10 on my list is my 1987 Lamborghini Countach LP5000. This car is a beast, but it is also an engineering marvel. And of course by marvel, I mean it is quite fascinating. Getting into my least favorite things about this, you cannot wear shoes. You literally cannot clutch and gas at the same time without your feet hitting each other. Reverse is actually where first gear is, you see, but they make this awesome little device that you just flip over to make sure you don't mistakenly go into reverse when you're trying to go into first. Except I never use it, because I have to remember to use it. So if you have to remember to use it, how are you going to remember to not go into reverse, you know what I'm saying? Second off is the air conditioning and the heat. It blows so poorly that you might as well not even use it. Third, there's a single windshield wiper that gets you about 20% coverage uh, when it's moving. Great job, Lamborghini. Fourth is going to be the window. Check this bad boy out. Feeling hot on a nice summer day? That's all that it goes down. That'll cool you right off. Forget about headroom. I mean, look at this thing. If I'm wearing a hat, no dice. This is all made okay though by the horn. I will just drive around hawking this thing endlessly because it sounds so amazing. That's right. Side note, there's literally not a curvy surface in this entire interior. Everything is a corner or square. Fortunately, I feel nice and safe. They went ahead and eliminated the lap portion of the belt for uh, weight reduction there. So we can just put that just around the shoulder. Boom, safe. Coincidentally, my favorite thing about it is the combination of all the least favorite things about it. All of those crazy things come together to make this the most retro, awesome, quirky car that I own. And look at it. This is the car that everybody had on their poster in their bedroom. Um, in the 1980s, including myself. Another fascinating point is the wing actually makes it slower and less aerodynamic, but it looks so much cooler, so, you know. Modifications that I've done to this vehicle include a complete rebuilt of the engine, trans, and I have an aftermarket exhaust system that makes it sound amazing. We did put some aftermarket wheels on this. Show them the picture, because eh, no, I'm saying it didn't turn out so good. Uh, and needless to say, factories are back on it. It is back to the triple white spec that it needs to be. Something unique and quirky that sets this apart is the fill-up. It is right here on the passenger side door, tucked inside of this vent that leads directly into the engine. I did get a chance to go check out the new Lamborghini Countach before it was made public. I went to the Lamborghini Lounge in New York, took a look at it, and frankly, it looked too much like the new stuff that they're releasing the Scion. I just wasn't pumped about it. I was hoping to see something that was a total throwback just like this with the huge wing. Kaiza actually did an awesome render of it, and if it looked a little bit more like that, I think that it'd be sitting in my driveway very soon as well. Up next is my 2019 McLaren Senna. Awesome fact about this, it was previously owned by Mr. Dead Mouse. I had this vehicle imported from Canada. It took me a little bit to get it in because it had a recall on the gas tank. Apparently the gas tanks just spontaneously combust, but that's just water into the bridge. This car is number five on my list. I absolutely love it. It is so fun. It probably has the craziest street presence out of all of the vehicles that I own. My favorite thing about this vehicle is actually that very same thing, the street presence. My least favorite feature about the car, easy one on that, is it is the least comfortable car of the entire collection by far. It is so uncomfortable after 15 minutes, I just want to get out of it, but I don't. We've got this car in race mode right now, similar function to the P1 and it has this massive, massive wing to keep this thing on the ground. Pa probably creates the most downforce of any vehicle out of the collection. This is the only hypercar I have that is modified. It has downpipes that are catless. It has a tune that has taken a solid year to get just right, but it is finally amazing, and this thing moves, let me tell you that. Now, I do track a lot of my cars, and this one is no exception. However, the two times that I've taken this to the track, I get around a lap, and it just pops right into limp mode. That is what she said. All right. <laughs> One of my other favorite modifications is the underglow. You see we have this wire that runs to the bottom and is attached via duct tape, as is the entire underglow system. Bailey insert the video here of the amazing look. I was actually quite surprised. They surprised me by installing this and it actually looked pretty amazing. So we're gonna keep it on there, maybe get it done a little bit better. Like all the other McLarens, awesome user interface. As I mentioned, least comfortable vehicle. 
by far. Something crazy about this is, this is actually around a thousand pounds lighter than the 720 and the 765, but it looks a lot bigger. And that is also what she said. <laughs> and it has a full carbon body that I much prefer to call a monocoque. A unique feature only to this vehicle is that the start-stop button is up here. Now with all the cars that I have, it is so confusing knowing which one gets started where it left, down here, up here, it's just a mess. I mean, even the 918 has a little spin dial. In addition to the start button up here, I have the climate control. This is how I put it into race mode and how I lock the doors. And then if I want to open the doors, there are two handles right here. As I close this door, you can see there is a huge glass panel right there in the door. This is the only vehicle that has a see-through door so people can look at my legs while I'm driving. What a feature. I'm pretty sure it's for weight savings. Speaking of McLaren glass, probably the least reliable glass of all of the vehicles. I have replaced quite a bit of these ceiling panels here. And just like the Countach we already went over, this thing has an amazingly large window to get that wind in here when it's really hot. This is my 2021 Resvani Hercules Military 6x6, which is basically just a glorified Jeep Gladiator. They took a Jeep Gladiator and they added $350,000 worth of parts. But let me tell you what, this is one of my favorite vehicles out of the freaking entire collection. It's so fun. It has a PA system. It's got a siren. It's got a whatever that thing's called. It smells like a farm in here. Window doesn't work. And when it does, it only rolls down to here. It's got front blinding lights, rear blinding lights, strobe lights, smoke screen, magnetic deadbolts, and shocking door handles. We don't use the magnetic deadbolts because they got stuck once and I'm not getting out of this thing because it is bulletproof. <laughs> but all that stuff on the other end of that is the quality of the vehicle. This thing spends more time in the shop than it does in my driveway, significantly more. I still love it. Some things I've done with this, I've, we've taken it off road. jumped it. Oh! <laughs> the fender just went whoop. And broke it. I threw a rock at it. The door handle? All the way here? Oh, yeah. How is this bulletproof if this is plastic? <laughs> <laughs> this was from off-roading through bushes. Uh, does the fender still flap? Double-sided tape is put back on the fender to hold that in nice and place until we hit a little bump. Then the double-sided tape flaps back off. The tasteful license plate and lack of a bumper. But it's got a trailer hitch, y'all. How about that? The Resvani falls at number seven on my list. Let me tell you what, again, it is fun. My favorite thing about this is just the overall experience of hauling booty right down the road. This thing is fast. My least favorite, of course, is what I mentioned before, the quality. You hit a tiny little bump, everything just falls apart. <laughs> what have you had to replace on this, Steve? Oh, dear God, what haven't I had to replace? Every, I mean... Front axles, rear axles, the engine. <laughs> it had 1,600 miles on the engine, had to get replaced. Truck bed had to be secured better down. Lights broke off, bumper didn't end up working out. Rear differential was leaking. We had to have a custom exhaust made. Next up is my 2022 765 LT Spider. I was one of the first in the country to get the Spider version. And what did I do? Uh, as far as modifications go, right away, I went ahead and installed some downpipes by Unobtainium, and we did a tune. So this thing is pushing right around 900 wheel horsepower. It is fast, it shoots six feet flames. And I absolutely love this. It is a thrill, and that puts it at number nine on my list out of all of the cars. So it did pretty well. Also can't forget that I added some awesome 22 inch gloss black wheels with color masked rivets. I think these are one of the best looking set of the wheels in my entire collection, no doubt. I spared no expenses with upgrades on this. It has a ton of carbon, almost every single carbon option that you could get. My favorite thing about the 765LT is that it is my only supercar that is a convertible. So, love it. My least favorite thing about the McLaren is that it actually takes a little bit of work to get it shooting flames. You have to, you have to hit it just right. But when you do, boy, I'll tell you what. Mmm. <laughs> A very interesting fact about this vehicle, it is the very first supercar that I fully spec'd by myself. This is my 2017 Ferrari 488 GTB. This is my only yellow car in the collection and it lands at number 18. Why number 18 do you say? Well, because of some issues that I'm going to explain in just a second. It would be higher if they didn't exist. Of course I did some 
Aftermarket wheels on this, I have some two-piece amazing gloss on matte black rotiforms. These are also probably top five as far as wheels that I've installed on my vehicles. It might have the greatest kind of curb presence of a supercar that I have. We did a Vorsteiner Aero Kit. Let me tell you what, this thing, if you drive over any tiny little bump, you are scraping every bump along the way, but that's okay. Um, awesome wing to match it in carbon. My least favorite thing about this is that it is very quiet. Now, why is it quiet? Because we took off the custom B-Rig exhaust that made it super loud, because every time we have that exhaust on, it blows oil and smoke out of the back because the factory exhaust is capturing all of that crap. So there's something seriously wrong with this motor and the Ferrari dealership just can't figure it out. However, my favorite thing about this is that it is just the most fantastically decorated supercar that I have, again, because of this awesome carbon aero kit by Vorsteiner and the carbon wing. This is my 2014 Pagani Wyra, previously owned by Mr. Keith Urban. We'll show you the interior in just a little bit, just to prove that it is a little bit country. Probably gonna change that and add the Tempesta package that's coming up soon. This vehicle lands at number 11 on the list. So it is a great car to drive around. It's super fun. It is the only vehicle that completely explodes out so you can see front, rear, engine, everything, all the components. Pretty neat sight to see. Now it does come in at number one in terms of keys. I mean, look at this thing. That thing is, that thing is pretty. Uh, pretty awesome. That's what I'm talking about, you know what I'm saying? It does have some aftermarket wheels. We still have the factory wheels, but these just looked a little bit better. And I think we're gonna go ahead and stick with these. They, they, look, they look clean and cool enough. It has the, uh, the AMG motor. It's probably the second loudest turbo. The turbo spooling up is so loud on the road, and I just love that sound. The Bugatti is definitely number one on loudness of the wastegate and the turbo spooling up. Absolutely craziness. I love the adjustable wings that it has on the vehicle. They help with cornering, slowing down, accelerating, and a bunch of other stuff to keep the car on the ground and performing well. Um, beautiful exhaust that ports out of the back. My favorite thing about this vehicle and probably is consistent with any other Pagani owner is the interior. The interior on this car, they spent so much time and effort making it just absolutely beautiful. And, uh, and, and it shows that there was just hours and hours of craft work put into the interior. That's usually the first comment that I hear whenever someone sits in this vehicle, they, they are just in awe of how beautiful it actually is inside of it. My least favorite thing about it is that of all the Hypers, it's arguably the slowest but I don't think that they had speed in mind. I mean, it's quick, don't get me wrong, um, but I think it was a little bit more focused on the beauty, the elegance of the interior and exterior of this vehicle. And I mean, look at this thing, it's, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Another cool thing is this is one of the few cars that I have that came with luggage. I've got a set on this side, some over there, some stuff behind the seats that I think are for like your dry clean clothes or whatever. And unfortunately it also matches the interior, which I'm not a huge fan of. So if we do get the interior reupholstered, I'm either gonna have to sell this stuff or also just get some new luggage. Uh, the interior alone in this thing is about, I think, eighty to ninety thousand dollars to reupholster. So, it is it is something to think about for sure. Hi. Stepping back into the 1980s, we've got my 1988 E28 M5. This is a super recent purchase of mine. And if you're a BMW purist, go ahead and just cover your ears. I'm gonna give you one second. Okay, there you go. We've got a lot of awesome things lined up for this. I just wanna tell you that we've already got a lowering kit that's gonna put this on a dual compressor air ride. I'm gonna get some custom wide wheels ordered. Why wide? Well, because we're gonna wide body this thing. We're gonna cut into the body and make this thing look awesome. And then finally, we are going to put an exhaust system in this. So it is gonna look like a completely different car. When I hear that this is one of about 1,300 that made it to the USA, I said, okay, cool. Let's modify it, let's cut into it. Um, BMW Pyrrhus, sorry, no I'm not. My favorite thing about my E28 is that it is in phenomenal shape. I literally just got it a few weeks ago. I could not believe how original this was. I was told it's completely original paint, it is super clean, and I got a fantastic deal. Only real downside is this fell off about a week after I got it, but you know what, I got such a great deal. I'm all right with that. My least favorite thing about it is that it is unmodified, no modifications yet. Because of all of that, it lands at number 16 on my list, but I think that once I, uh, once I cut into this thing and modify it, it's gonna rank up a lot higher than that. If you wanna check out this awesome build, be sure to subscribe and you can check it out along the way. It's probably gonna be the only M5 in the entire world that's an E28 that has these kind of modifications to them. And you know what, if you've got an idea on the wheels that I should do, comment below and let me know what you think will look awesome. We look at all the comments. I. <laughs> All right, that's good, bro. Up next is my 2021 Chevy Corvette C8 convertible. I was one of the first people in the US to actually, and in the world, to get a convertible, and I was definitely the first person to wide body. So we did a Pandem wide body kit, and this one is a very unique kit because it is super ridiculously wide and also very square with black accents all at the bottom. I think it sets this car off, and this car probably would be towards the very bottom if it wasn't for this kit. 
um, but because of this kit, we're putting it at number 21. So it has a dual compressor air ride to make it slam real fast and increase back up uh, really fast. And we have it slammed down to the ground. Something that I always seem to forget is that it is slammed when I decide to go ahead and start driving forward. So probably a bunch of scrapes on the bottom of this, uh, this aero kit. When we first installed the, the kit, we realized that the spoiler they include did not work on the convertible. And Pandem didn't know because frankly, we were the first people to actually install it on a convertible. So Tommy ended up uh, finding a really nice duckbill style carbon spoiler that at first I hated. I wanted some big, ridiculous, stupid spoiler and he talked me into this and I am glad that he did because this would look silly without any, with anything different than this in my opinion. Um, we swapped out the exhaust system. It had chrome square tips. We decided to do a Borla black exhaust. This is one of the loudest cars in the entire collection. And then I was smart and got ahead of the curve by ordering wheels once I ordered the wide body kit so we had the wheels right around the time the car was complete. And these are some beautiful, very clean throwback five spoke rotiform three piece wheels. Um, and they are gloss black on matte black, which is my favorite color combo on a wheel. And then like some of the other vehicles, I did yellow brake calipers to kind of accent and throw in three different colors into the mix. Um, I love it when you can just make three colors work on a car. My least favorite thing about the C8 is that the interior is slightly cheap and there are just too many buttons to kind of figure something out. My favorite thing is that this is the very first vehicle out of the entire collection that I was able to fully spec out myself. Um, not the first supercar, just the first vehicle. So I did a blue on blue look and I am huge on matching interiors with the exteriors and I think this one just matches absolutely perfectly right down to the seat belts. We have quite a bit of air lights on the dash and we were able to resolve some of them. I actually ordered this vehicle with the magnetic suspension. I wasn't planning on slamming it when I first ordered it like a long time ago. And because of that, it made there, there be some complexities in adding the air ride. Because of that, we had to just go ahead and throw in the old shocks loosely and hook up the old sensors into the new I think into the computer to keep it working and happy. So now we still have a couple lights on, some front lift errors and such, but you know what? It runs, it drives, and there are no more issues of it stopping at 85 miles an hour. That was a fun time. Lucky number 13 on the list is my McLaren P1. You're probably asking, how is this number 13 on this guy's list? Well, first of all, Tommy kind of talked me into getting this car. Usually he does a great job. This one, I just wasn't that hyped about. Now it does run and drive pretty amazing. I just don't get as excited about it as most other car collectors do. This is actually number one on some people's list, so it's pretty low on my list. Overall, it does look really nice. It is currently in race mode, which I am told it is actually not even legal to drive in this mode, but it looks just a heck of a lot better. And it has a huge extended wing when that happens, which I love myself some big wings. Race mode also lowers the car and gets it ready basically to go on the track and haul booty. It also eliminates the traction control option when it is in race mode, which is perfectly okay by me. My least favorite thing about the P1 are these seats. When you sit down in this thing, it hugs your freaking hips, like squeezes them. My most favorite thing about this is the sound. You can just hear the combination of the hybrid and the gas motor working together that make it just sound extremely unique. I can differentiate this from any car out of the collection. I had a 720S before I bought this. And my 720S was one of my favorite cars in the whole wide world. Granted, it had a tune with downpipes. And honestly, the bang for the buck, if I had the option to go buy either one of these, I'd probably just go and save a bunch of money and go buy that 720S again. I do love that it has a color matched interior. I am a sucker for color matched interiors and I will always match my interior with the exterior in some way, even if it's just the stitching. There are some really neat buttons. So I don't want to shortchange this thing. It is really fast and fun to drive. And when you're hauling butt, there's actually this other iPass button that you can actually hit it. And it's like injecting nitrous oxide directly into the motor. It gives it a crazy level of speed that is super thrilling. And then there's a DRS button right here that lowers the wing so you can have less drag, more downforce to keep this thing on the ground when you're going 200 plus miles an hour, which I've done, not in this car. <laughs> 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 By hitting the iPass button, it gives you 100% power from the gas and the hybrid motor at the same time. One of my favorite things about McLaren and why I owned one before and now own three is that they have an awesome user interface. It is super close, easy to use, and actually they designed the seats very close together with a very minimal kind of center console. It allows me to be a little bit closer to my passenger, which is usually my kids, which I love. <laughs> Unless it's Tommy, and then, mm, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Some of the Hypers don't even have a frunk, but not only does this have one, but it has moderate sized storage in there. The Bugatti does not have one. We'll go over that one in a little bit. And then the Pagani has zero. Thank you, McLaren. Up next is my 2019 Bugatti Chiron, or as the French call it, Bugatti Chiron. This falls at number two on my list, and if you asked me a few weeks ago, it would have been number one, but there's another vehicle down the line that I just like a little bit better. However, this is a very, very, very close second. I love this car because it is the most horsepower. It's 1,500 horsepower. It is the fastest 
this thing will just jet you past 100 miles an hour. In fact, it's the only vehicle that I've ever been over 200 miles an hour in on a street in Mexico. Awesome street presence, probably the most cloudy vehicle of the entire collection. If you're a clout enthusiast, you will like this one very much. This thing has 16 inch brake rotors and it is by far the best braking vehicle of the entire collection. There is no other vehicle that even comes close to the braking of this. This vehicle actually comes off of warranty this October. If you think we should straight pipe it when it's out of warranty, comment below. I'm probably gonna do it anyway, even if you don't comment. <laughs> Just letting you know. Subscribe to see that. I'm actually really hyped to see that one. My least favorite thing, and probably the only thing that I don't like about this vehicle is the shift lag. When you shift it into drive or shift it into reverse, it just takes a little bit too long. It takes like an extra second, so oftentimes you're hitting the gas and you're still kind of in that neutral shift state. One little side note though, if it comes to the winter, and what is my favorite car of the entire collection of the Hypers and Supers in the winter, this would be it because it's all wheel drive, super comfortable. And now onto the daily drivers. We're gonna go through the daily drivers pretty quickly. Now there's still some badass cars, but they're not quite as exciting as all the Super and Hyper cars. So let's start on with my most commonly done most commonly used daily driver, my Tesla Plaid. So this is the fastest production vehicle available right now, period. And let me tell you what, it will whip you into the back of your seat. Um, I love this because it has autopilot, it's super fast, I don't have to fill it up with gas. Because of the autopilot, it has some of the most awesome tech where I can just sit back and let this thing drive me all the way into the city when I wanna go out to dinner or whatever it may be. Now of these dailies, mine, mine are typically black. Uh, maybe I'm just a little darker on the inside. And then my wife likes the white ones because she's just an angel. You'll notice on my Tesla Plaid that I've got some Anovia aftermarket wheels. These are actually lighter than the factory wheels. They look better and they were a hell of a lot cheaper than the upgrade that Tesla offered. So. Bada boom. Go ahead and shop them at fitmentindustries.com if you wanna get some awesome options like that. My favorite thing about the Plaid is just that it's incredibly fast. My least favorite is actually the yoke-shaped steering wheel. It is just a disaster, and even after driving this for like six months, I just can't get used to it. Because this is my daily driver that I put the most miles on, and because I love it so much, this one landed at number six. On to the next is the Rolls-Royce. This came with a lot of chrome trim that I completely blacked out because I am not a big fan of chrome. Um, this one is a car that I get in and I just love driving it every time, but I forget how much I actually like it. We threw some aftermarket Vossen 22 inch all gloss black wheels that really look well on this. This is, this is kind of that car that you just want to take when you're going to go have a nice dinner in the city, but you don't want to go whip three or four hypercars with your friends. It's powerful, fast. We use it as a roller car and it's just a really great all-around car to haul the family around and some friends. My favorite thing about this car is actually the backstory behind it. Tristan Thompson, now of the Chicago Bulls, used to own it, and he actually drove this car from one baby mama hospital to the other baby mama hospital when both of his women were having babies at the same time. Good job, buddy. My least favorite thing is that they just don't have the Bluetooth system figured out. It is a pain in the butt to repair my phone every time I get in there and get it playing. The Rolls-Royce falls at number 14 on my list. Looking at this, you might think, this is just a plain Jeep Wrangler. Actually, not quite. This is the first Jeep Wrangler in 40 years that they've thrown an eight-cylinder motor into. So this is the Rubicon 392, and, uh, and my wife would consider this her summer daily driver. It is stupid fast, like super fun, loud, and we went ahead and threw the first ever supercharger on the Rubicon 392 to make it even better. Uh, my wife loves it, actually. My favorite feature about this is actually twofold. It pops wheelies, yes it does, and also has a fully retractable roof. My least favorite thing about it is the least fuel efficient vehicle of all the daily drivers. And because of everything we discussed, the Rubicon 392 falls at number 17 on the list. Let's move on to the Land Rover. This is my 2020 Land Rover Defender SE. This is dead last on my list at number 28, and I just, there is nothing that I like about this car. The technology for the the crew, like the dynamic cruise where it follows cars is horrendous. Uh, the lane change guidance, I'm like taking a left into the left turn lane and it's veering me out of the left turn lane, almost getting me into an accident, doing exactly the opposite of what it was designed to do. Um, now it looks, it looks tasteful. And part of the reason that we got it was because the early 90s Defender was just such a badass vehicle, but this thing is basically an overgrown piece of crap. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, it will not be it will not be part of the collection much longer and I'm not going to spend much more time on this other than to say it doesn't drive great it's slow it sucks gas has poor technology um, I just hate it and I'm actually going to replace this with a badass vehicle that is arriving super soon and I am super pumped to get it it will definitely be better than this one. I actually have three other daily drivers. They are not here right now. Two of them are at my Florida house and one of them my wife is out driving. Uh, so we're gonna go over those real quick. Coming in at number 19 is my 2021 Model X dual motor. 
Same reasons basically as the Model S why I like it. Just a great car overall and super great technology. It hauls the family around just fine. Uh, I have uh, another Model X down in Florida that's a little bit older. So that falls at number 25. Uh, that's a 2018 100D Model X. And then I've got my 2017 Chrysler Pacifica. Bought that when the kids were a little bit smaller. It served a great purpose. Still helps us out in our Florida house when we're hauling around family. That one comes in at number 27 on the list. This is my 2022 Lamborghini Urus. I just got this in and it replaces the Land Rover Defender that was previously number 28. So by default, we have to put this at number 28. However, I've driven it for the last few days and I absolutely love it. I think it will easily be top 10 in the next week or so. I had this vehicle option in the very rare Verde Selvins color. I love the way that it looks. And I ordered these wheels way ahead of time from Variant. They are three piece custom wheels that look really, really nice and we're here just in time for when the vehicle arrived. I did spec this out with a whole bunch of carbon. I thought that it would accentuate and make the Verde Selvins look even better. And we plan to actually paint the calipers to match the body really soon. We've just only had the vehicle for a few days, so that will get done real soon. As with anything else that I spec and will spec going forward, fully color matched interior. This, uh, I was surprised that this has such a great user interface because my Aventador that I had previously absolutely did not. This is actually very techy, possibly only second to my Teslas uh, in terms of technology. I'm six feet two and that front seat is pulled really far back and I actually fit still quite comfortably in here. I love that about it. But my most favorite feature is the massaging seats. It's my only vehicle in the entire fleet that has massaging seats. The Urus is so new that it's hard to pick a least favorite feature, but at this point it's the shifting mechanism. It's very different than the rest. I think it could be a little bit different to make it more optimized, but we'll see what, we'll see how my opinion changes on that a little later. I did have one modification done when it arrived at the dealership, and that was them installing a Lamborghini factory exhaust system that was a little louder. Unfortunately, it is only that, a very little bit louder. And I lost the black exhaust tips that come with the factory system. So if I could go back, I would have saved myself the $15,000 upgrade. And now onto my favorite vehicle of the entire collection. My 2015 Porsche 918 comes in at number one. If you would have asked me a few weeks ago, I would have said the Bugatti, and the Bugatti has been my favorite for the last year or so, but this one has edged it out. I freaking love this car. It sounds so amazing. It was the fastest production car for about six or seven years. It's a Spider, and I've come to recently love Spider as the weather warms. It's a unique one of one color. It's a gray black with a guards red, which, I mean, look at this thing. It looks incredible. People either love it or they hate it. I love it personally. And then it has the acid green brake calipers, stitching, and then um, behind the badging. Only 918 of these things were built. Porsche 918 makes sense. This vehicle is by far the most agile, best handling vehicle of the entire collection. It feels so lightweight and it just grips and hugs your body. It feels like you're one with the vehicle. Not every car collector that has this many vehicles will say that the 918 is their favorite, but I think the majority of our crew actually strongly believe that, that this is the best car of the whole collection. I first received this car in the winter and I actually ranked it almost dead last. Like it wasn't getting traction. I just didn't like it. Since then, I've clearly really grown to love it. My favorite thing about the 918 is that it is the fastest car that I have. My least favorite thing is that it's just so freaking hard to get out of. If I was going back to buying my very first hypercar, this would have been it. Also, we need some license plate suggestions. We've got some funky license plates on all of the other ones, pretty much all of them. Send us a good, funny example in the comments below. And for number 20 on the list is my 1985 Porsche 911 Safari. This car is quite a unique one of the collection. The only brown car that I have and it is unique because Tommy had been trying to get me to get some kind of off-road Porsche. I said, hell no, they're way too expensive to build. 200,000 plus dollars, six plus months of waiting. And then all of a sudden this one popped up on Bring a Trailer and I was able to get it for right around half that price. So couldn't pass it up. And what did we do the moment that we got it? We went and took it out to an off-road little track and we put this thing to the test. I drove this thing hard and it performs amazing, way better than my Resvani. This is one of five stick shift cars that I have. It is actually a Targa. I don't know that there's a Safari Targa that exists out there. And this Safari isn't quite done yet. We're gonna add a bunch more pieces. Um, we're gonna do a front kind of bumper guard. We're gonna put a spare tire on the roof somehow if we can affix it to the Targa top. Cool thing about this, unlike the GT3 RS that pulls out the rear seats for rate reduction, 
I can actually drive my three kids in this car because it seats four, not comfortably. If your child is over 12 years old, not gonna work in this car. My favorite part about this Porsche is that it is the only car I have that can really go off-road, zero problem at all. My least favorite thing is probably the heat. Now, because this engine isn't liquid-cooled, it is air-cooled, they had to get a little bit special with the heat. So there are like four different knobs you've got to turn and adjust just to get the heat working in the winter. Now it does work, it's just a pain in the butt. When you look at the interior, you think, is this a Tesla Plaid? No, absolutely not. It is uh, someone that took this thing when they did the Safari fabrication and decided to make the seats and door panels plaid, which I think is awesome. It just makes it feel even more like a throwback car. Extremely exceptional well build quality on the dash and just everything, everything is built extremely well. The engine runs fantastic, is in great condition, full rebuild. Um, and then transmission shifts swimmingly, of course. But one of, one of the finest interior remodel remakes that I've seen on any of my vehicles. This is my 2018 Audi R8 RWS. There were only 999 RWS models and there is only one in the maritime blue color in the entire world and this is it. I installed an Alpha A10 twin turbo kit from AMS and it has this thing putting about a thousand horsepower to the rear wheels. We did uh, some downpipes and some awesome custom tailpipes there that I think really set it off. We also did some tasteful upgrades from Vorsteiner. We have the Vorsteiner wing and the Vorsteiner wheels that really make it look nice. This is my cheapest supercar in the entire collection. I actually bought this for only $85,000 on Copart. It had the front end that was wrecked and we completely rebuilt it and that left enough money in the budget to do that upgrade to the twin turbo kit. This one falls at number 22 on my list and oddly it seems to be the one that people are always drawn to when they come and view my collection. I would say half the people that seem to come view my collection go straight to this car. My favorite thing about this is that it's the second highest horsepower car of the entire collection and I basically get the most horsepower per dollar in this car over any other car. My least favorite is that I just really don't like this car in general. We're taking a slight diversion here and looking at my 2021 Nissan GTR. It is here at the shop. It's been here for a few months getting a 2,000 horsepower engine rebuild. Pretty cool looking setup that we've got there. Going into the, what we call the box. This is one of my least favorite cars in the entire collections. It's just uncomfortable. I don't really like it. I hate it. Um, and it falls at number 26 on the list. So, I do have a favorite thing about it and that is that it's gonna have a 2,000 horsepower motor that's gonna shoot six feet flames. My least favorite thing is absolutely everything else about it. Pick anything, that's my least favorite. There you go. We did do some tasteful modifications. We have this huge wing on there. Um, we have a roll cage. I don't know if that's in there yet, is it? Not yet. Oh, it is. All right, that's all the time that the box deserves. We're gonna move on to the next. This is my 2015 LaFerrari. I got this thing about a month ago, but it only arrived about a week ago because it had some work that needed to be done. My initial impression of this is that it is freaking amazing. It's a little early to grade it, but I think that it's landing right at about number four. This is one that could rapidly rise up in the ranks in number two or number one. I won't know probably for another few months. This completes my holy trinity. I am super excited that I have all three now. Interesting fact, I believe this is the best sounding car of the entire collection. My least favorite thing about the LaFerrari is that the wheels just seem a little bit bland to me, so we're likely gonna change these wheels up in the next month or two. And one very cool fact about this is that these seats actually don't adjust at all. In fact, the full pedal system, the gas brake, those are what move back and forth, and what that does is it actually helps the car keep the correct center of gravity. Pretty neat. All right, one of the reasons I selected this particular LaFerrari was A, the price was great, and B, it had some awesome contrasting uh, red in the seat. Uh, I really don't like to have just a plain Jane interior, so that helped differentiate that. And then another super cool feature about this is the amazing storage space right here in the glove box. Check this out. There we go. It will not even fit a phone. <laughs> Not many modifications at this point. However, I've already got an exhaust lined up from Tubi. It's sitting in my garage. Um, we're gonna throw it on in the next couple weeks. Actually, let me start it up for you now. You can hear what it sounds like before, and it does sound amazing even before. Can you imagine what that's gonna sound like with basically straight pipes on it? I can't wait. Yes. That sounds so good. I, I was around the corner and I'm like, yo. <laughs> Holy best. crap. That, I think that's the best sounding car you own. I think you're right. That's what I'm saying. That's nuts. All right, well, on to the next. Moving on from the LaFerrari, we've got my 1983 Cadillac Fleetwood Broham limo. Believe it or not, this is number three on my list. This is such a cool vibe car. I love taking this out to like some vibey old restaurant with the family on a cold winter day. There's almost no better feeling I get than whipping this thing. 
You might be surprised to hear that about me, but I'm really starting to get into these five cars. Now, I'm gonna show you the interior because check that out, blue cloth interior. So what we did is we kept the original tube TV, we replaced the head units with some uh, brand new units that look like they're old timey. We rewired the whole thing so that the TV still works. It has an amazing partition window. It has a full beverage center with all of the glass amenities. I just love this thing. It is, it is, absolutely amazing. What I like most about this is just that it is the most unique vehicle I think that I own. Um, what I like the least about it is is it's freaking slow. Now I like a relatively slow car if it's indicative of that era, but this is so slow. So we're gonna LS swap it, coming soon. Subscribe now if you wanna see stuff like that happen because it's gonna happen. And now onto the next vehicle. Okay, at number 24 on the list is my 2015 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD. Mr. Sean Chartier of Custom Offsets basically gave me this thing at a deal that I could not refuse. This truck is actually pretty nationally famous. If you Google CO2 truck, um, or CO2 Chevy Silverado, you'll see a ton of footage around this because we did a huge build series on our Custom Offsets YouTube page. Speaking of which, for all your wheel and tire needs, go to customoffsets.com if you've got a truck or SUV and go to fitment.com if you've got a car. You will find the biggest selection with just the awesomest looking wheels and a awesome purchase flow beginning to end with the best customer service team in the industry. Back to the truck now. All right, so took this in about a month ago. Um, I haven't been able to drive it too much because it's been in and out of the shop with some issues with programming. However, uh, and that's probably why it's, it's at number 24 on the list. I just need to drive it a little bit more. Um, but this thing is a huge, fun truck, unlike any other vehicle that I have in the collection. It has our 26-inch chrome Archon wheels on it. Um, that's one of the brands, one of the brands that I own. Um, a super neat build, big lift kit, um, Fox shocks, jacked up leaf springs, amp research bars that function beautifully. Sean kept it very clean for me. And when I got it, Sean said to make sure that I took care of it. Within a week, I took it mudding. Look at this thing. It was built to go in the mud. I think he nearly poofed himself when he saw the, the video that I sent him. <laughs> Sorry, Sean. <laughs> My most favorite thing about this is that it just grabs everybody's attention because it's so freaking huge. And that is what she said. My least favorite thing about it is that it's so freaking huge. <laughs> hard to move, hard to park, hard to maneuver. All right, next up on the list is the 2019 Porsche GT3 RS in lizard green. One of the very first supercars that I bought. I think it was actually number three, something like that. Uh, I love this car. It is my workhorse. It is the only car I have taken to the track multiple times and hasn't broken or caught on fire. I have literally taken eight to ten plus cars to the track and they all break or catch on fire with the exception of this. So this is my little baby. It's also a flat six cylinder that has the loudest exhaust on the planet. I love it but it rattles the freaking neighborhood. Some unique features about this car is that Porsche does a lot of silly things to do some weight savings. They took off the front badge and just did a sticker. They use little cloth tethers for door handles instead of using real door handles. They got rid of the back seats that are typically found on the 911 that will only fit children anyway. I think I went over that on the Safari. Naturally, I'm a big Wang guy, so this thing has one of the biggest Wangs in the collection. I'm sure that creates massive downforce. Very nice contrasting bronze factory wheels. This might be the only vehicle from the factory that has bronze wheels, and I think it looks amazing with the lizard green color. Of course, it has a color matched interior that I absolutely fell in love with. Bada boom. I would say that this car has the absolute best transmission. It's the Porsche PDK that they use in some Audi. It is the most responsive, amazing transmission that doesn't require a lot of silliness for launch mode. Um, by far the best built transmission of the entire collection. And this one is an extremely fun experience when you are doing poles. It is one of my favorite cars to do a pole in. In fact, my favorite thing about this car is doing a pole. It is just loud and shifts amazing, so my favorite car to do poles in. My least favorite thing about this car, what's my least favorite thing? Tell me how many I'm in, I'll say. I've been scratching my head here on how to think of a negative, and what you don't see is like three minutes off camera. I'm like, what? what is a negative? What is the least favorite thing about this? And then I remembered, because the exhaust is so loud and it vibrates so much, occasionally I have to have an exhaust clamp retightened. And that is the extent of the work I've had to have on this with 10,000 plus miles put on it. So big thumbs up for this car, just in terms of overall reliability and awesomeness and really very, very little to nothing that I actually don't like about it. Up next is my 2012 Mercedes SLS AMG. Now, right now I don't have this car with me because it is at the car dealership. I am getting ready to sell it. Why am I selling it? Well, because it's went up about $70,000 in the last year since I bought it. And I'm just not driving it that much. We did do an aftermarket exhaust to make it a lot louder. It does look super cool with the gold wing doors. It is pretty quick. I don't drive it, so it's gotta go. On to the next. And for my final and most exciting vehicle, 
I'll show it to you in just a second, but be sure to like, comment, and subscribe below. We're trying to get to 200,000 subs. Please make that happen. Remember, everything we do is for you. All the profits we make go to charity. Buy some merch. And thank you for watching. Y'all have, have a great freaking day.